you got to constantly keep evolving your skills because people around you they are analyzing you a lot it's a constant journey like you said it's it's you're never you're never actually complete as a player quantity is one aspect of it but it's the quality of that practice that is almost more important you feel responsible for everything you feel responsible for the success and failure and you take it personally not everyone you know is invested around your success or you being successful it's not about us winning more trophies and getting more talent and all of that but just the benefits and the advantages of playing the sport Hello I am Mukesh Bansal welcome to Sparks our guest today is Rahul Dravid Rahul is among the greatest cricketers to ever played for the country he represented india over 16 years across variety of formats he has set many records on the field he captained team india he is the fourth highest run scorer ever in test cricket rahul was known for his patience his resilience and his meticulous preparation before every single match that he has played he was the ultimate team player willing to don any hat willing to do whatever it takes to help team india win he has played across variety of batting situations depending upon what the team needed he even kept wickets for team india in the odi cricket for a number of years he continues to be a great role model on and off the field after retiring from his active playing role he transitioned into a role of a coach working with lot of younger cricketers help sharpen their skills he worked with under 19 india team as well as india a team for number of years under his leadership under 19 team went on to win the 2018 world cup in the process rahul has set new standards for how to approach coaching younger talent in the country through his excellence academy 6 he even works with cricketers as young as age 5 and above he is currently the coach of indian cricket team and is helping team india transition to next generation of players in this episode we talk about his four decades in cricket all the compounding that has created all the finer nuances rahul is able to see all the patterns he is able to see and how he has really mastered his craft of both his craft of playing cricket as well as coaching younger cricketers he talked about having a beginner's mindset when he transitioned to role of a coach he did not approach it as a legend of indian cricket instead he wanted to learn the fundamentals from the very beginning and hence he has developed very different approach to coach- coaching we talk about how important it is to have continuous investment learning because no matter who you are the only way you get better is through continuous learning and deliberate practice rahul also talks about how sports not only build sport specific skills but also life skills which comes in handy in every walk of life rahul is a great ambassador for sports he is an amazing humble human being and he continues to inspire millions of sports people around the country i learned so much from this episode i am inspired to talk to rahul and i really hope you will enjoy this episode as well so rahul i think where i want to start with you know you been nearly 40 years since you've been around cricket you started playing cricket at the age of 12 if i or even earlier and then you played for india for a very long period of time started coaching under india uh, you know under 19 team india a team and now coaching the national cricket team after 40 years of cricket do you think you're still learning about cricket you know how the amount of learning you would have had in this 40 years and the depth you would have had you know the patterns you would have seen again and again just can you talk to me about your journey of you know how investing four decades in one profession as how has you know your journey evolved in that you know period yeah it's it's probably the the love of the games come even before that you know i think it's yeah, it's it's probably 12 years since i at the age of 12 i probably started playing formal cricket as in went to a camp and played with a hard ball but but i don't know i think my earliest memories as a kid uh, as a young boy probably at the age of my 3 or 4 or something i my you know playing with my brother or my father you know throwing me a few balls around near the house and uh, just playing on the streets with my friends um and and just watching or not yeah i mean when my father took it there was no television cr- cricket on television in those days but but yeah just being taken to a cricket ground and watching my father play a little bit for you know the league cricket that he played uh, for his company uh yeah so a lot of my early memories you know and things that i still remember are actually associated with cricket is not a lot i remember about being you know a really young kid but but what i do remember i think a lot of it is actually associated still with cricket 
like you said, it's been a really long time, and and I think it started from a actually just a love of the game. You know, I just loved the game. I uh, my father loved the game, so I, I don't know. In some ways, it sort of rubbed off onto me, and uh, and just played it, and and a, and a sort of continued on that journey and I think you've been very lucky you know I'm very grateful and, and very fortunate that um, you know I mean how many years like like you said it's been 38 40 years uh, you're sort of still uh, involved in the game have been able to make the game um, which really was a love and a hobby uh, was able to make that a profession um, you know still continue to be associated with the game so yeah I feel deeply grateful for that you know it's not it's not it's not very often that you uh, you can claim to say that your hobby and your love was you know something that you did for such a long time in your life and and you continue to do it and continue to be associated with it so yeah you know for that for that i'm truly grateful um it's it's been uh, obviously it's been a you know i've learned a lot and i think obviously the learning has been about cricket partly and and that's you know like i said became a love and a hobby then became a profession and you obviously get a lot more uh you you have to learn a lot about it you it's just some more of time you spend on the skills on on developing uh you know your abilities as a cricketer uh the skills that you want to keep improving at you're, you're competing at a really elite level a high level everyone around you is constantly getting better improving so you've got to continue to do the same um physically there've been you know physical in terms of just understanding of the body understanding of the mind as well in things that have been associated with the game Uh, so much of that i think over the years i've learned um things have changed a lot um you know from from i think the the sport i've actually seen the sport you know sort of go from um being a really in a lot of ways an amateur sport to today becoming you know truly professional and just the amount of time i think it was always played seriously by the people who played it you know i don't want to knock that knock anyone who played it in in that generation because everyone i could see the effort and the time and the hard work they put in but i just think the amount of time and the and the level of expertise the level of support systems that are there today vis-a-vis compared to when we were starting out really you know shows you that stark difference between uh something that was really amateur to progressing today to being you know uh, truly professional and truly elite and sort of seen that whole transition of the sport being involved in that transition of the sport as a player and and now even as a coach so um that's been a fascinating thing for me to see um also you know great learnings along the way uh, as well uh, i think uh, you know the world has also changed so much in in that time i i you know when i look back on um the early days i think you know your access to knowledge um was was quite limited you know you relied on coaching books or uh, you relied on expert coaches and there were few and far between in those days uh the access to television like i said was was not to that level there was some television came in but again it was probably not to the level that you know you could get a lot out of it other than just entertainment but today you know if you look at um wherever you are in the world you know through the internet and um, just the access to knowledge i think has completely changed you know everyone has incredible access to knowledge and you know that's not a barrier anymore in a, in a lot of ways again television has improved so much to become something that's also a form of entertainment but also a form of in some ways education you know teaching it's become something that you can learn the game from wherever you are you could be in a small town or a village and you know just watching television coverage the quality of television coverage the expert analysis that goes on um it's a it's a great coaching tool today it's it's something that has really changed um so I, yeah i think you know you you've seen sort of i've seen a lot of that and seen a lot of those changes and yeah it's been it's been quite you know it's it's been really interesting um and you continue to learn i mean you know you keep learning you keep sort of growing you keep improving with times and that's a, that's a constant journey i think amazing has you made a transition from being a player at the absolute elite level to becoming a coach did you have to learn some other skills deliberately or the coaching just came very naturally to you oh, do you remember deliberately putting extra effort in figuring out how to be an amazing coach as well yeah i have and i you know i continue to learn on that area it's it's i think it's actually quite it's it's almost two different things you know i think uh, you, you are a player and 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 you play the sport and you're focused very much on yourself 
um, and getting better yourself so that you know that if you get better yourself, you are going to be able to support the team and help the team get better and you're invested in improving your skills and your abilities to make the team a, a more skillful and a better team. Um, when you go into the coaching, yes, there is some aspects of it you take into the coaching, uh, into into your coaching, which is obviously the experiences that you've had. I mean, that, that nobody can take that away from you. You've had certain experiences, you've been in certain situations, um, and if you've done it for a long time, you've uh, experienced a lot of things. You've had the pl privilege of maybe working with a lot of other coaches and interacting with a lot of other cricketers, and 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 you pick up things and you and you learn things. But but I think when you get into the coaching side of things, yes, there is some things that you can take over from your playing days, but I think it's quite limited. And 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 I think when you get into coaching, you you quickly realize that there are a lot of other aspects to coaching and and that you need to need to consciously work on and get better at you know and and I think maybe just to give you an example things like your ability to communicate and your ability to talk and your uh I think that's something that you're not under that much of it's it's not that critical as a player you know you're a, yeah you want to have a good relationship with your friends or your teammates and you are communicating in some ways but I think then as you get into uh, coaching, then, you know, the, the, a conscious effort on your ability to communicate, your ability to deal with, uh, you, you you will probably be in a lot more difficult conversations as a coach than you would ever have been as a player. Um, your ability to manage a larger group of players, like I said, as a player, you're probably just managing yourself in some ways. But here now you've got a responsibility to manage not only the players, but then there is a ecosystem around that in which you probably have to play a role um, in managing that as well. So I think these are things that, you know, personally, I, I can't speak for other people, but personally for me at least, I had to make a, a little bit of a conscious effort to try and get to learn and get better at. And, and that continues, you know, I, I still don't think that I'm, you know, very good at a lot of those things. You know, there's so much out there that you can constantly look to get better at. Um, the actual technical skills of the game and things you know that's that's just one really aspect of it and that's and that's again something you are learning as well like like for example I spent a lot of my time being a batsman you know and I did a bit of wicket keeping but a lot of my um, focus as a player in the in my whole career was about batsmanship you know and it was about batting and I uh, you know because that's what I needed to be good at I didn't need to be good at fast bowling or spin bowling and you know and, and whatever time I had and energy I had was truly devoted to trying to become a good batsman so I studied batsmanship and tried to understand about batsmanship as much as I could and then as you go into coaching um, and when you do the coaching courses and when you you know do a lot of uh, these things that you do as a coach when you sort of get into it and you realize actually how much or how little sometimes you know of about you know other aspects about uh, about the game you know whether it's spin bowling and fielding and and it's not that you it, there are small technical things about it that probably you've not paid much attention to as a as a coach and that's something that um, you need to learn and, and that's why I, like I always tell people who want to get into coaching and in in you know uh, cricketers who want to get into coaching after me and I say that. Look, it's not about, yeah, you might have played the game for a long time. And um, and and sometimes, you know, you can feel that ego, oh, why do I need to do a level one or a level two coaching course? You know, why do I need to go through it? And and I can speak from just personal experience, you know, that there are a lot of things that you suddenly you realize, hey, you know, I hadn't thought about it in this way because you're so focused on yourself and the way you know how to play best that sometimes there are a lot of other aspects of the game that, you know, you, you don't really pay much attention to. And sometimes courses like these can just, you know, they just help you uh, just refresh a little bit of your memory. They help you. It's easier then as a coach than when you have to deal with players of all the different skills. You're not only dealing with batsmen, right? You're dealing with bowlers, and spinners and fielders. And it certainly helps you in the conversations, you know, when you can open up conversations. It's not only about the technique. But certainly, if you have spent a little bit of time in a conscious effort to learn a little bit more, um, I have found personally, at least, it helps you in the And do you think so there is a deliberate effort on your part to invest in your learning in an ongoing manner to become better at earlier, you know, as a batsman and today as a coach? Because, you know, someone like yourself who has pretty much achieved everything, you know, you can achieve 
in the game of cricket you can just walk in the field and you know from the vantage point of i have done it i know how it is done you know i but for a short while yeah. you can walk in like that for a short while but uh, but honestly um, you know uh, in the end of the day there's another generation of players yeah they'll you know i'm sure they'll Uh, you know listen to your stories for a short time but after that everyone gets bored of listening to stories you know you can you can only you can only set, tell such stories in so, so many we never those stories today yeah. yeah. it's, it, it's, it's, it's so many creative ways yeah i did this and i was this and so that's yeah that's something you really don't want to be like you know you don't want to be starting to uh start having to talk about uh, your times or, or your stories or i did this and you know or at least that's not the way i I, I you know I I like to do it but but yeah so so there is and there has to be a, that conscious effort to constantly um you know uh, and and I think I think for me I just I guess that's just the way I've always been I, I think I've always even 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 like as a you know playing the game or playing the kid I've just been curious I think curiosity has been something that's uh, uh I don't know it's just, it's always been there I haven't never really thought about it um but but i've always been curious about things and and wanting to uh, figure out things and uh wanting to learn new things so um yeah that that continues and sometimes to your detriment i mean sometimes you know to be very honest with you you can overthink things sometimes you can over you can over analyze things and you can want to you know rather than just going out there and doing it so so i have to be conscious you know that my personality at times can be someone that's um, you know that's very keen to know things can get very curious you know wants to um it wants to know things and 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 sometimes you know you can sometimes wait to know too much or, or or try to be too perfect about things you know rather than just going out there and expressing yourself and and just doing things and uh so i think that's yeah it's just just an understanding i think of of my personality i'll be careful that sometimes you know i don't let that become something that holds me back or holds me from trying things or you know i maybe i don't know stuff or maybe i need to know more and wait a little longer and So I think that's I think we're all different and each one you know there are guys I know who you know who just dive into things you know and they don't necessarily need a lot of information and knowledge and 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 yeah so I think that's also been a learning for me and you know just I and I think that's the beauty of this whole thing that you that as you sort of play cricket and as you get into coaching uh, and you put yourself out there um you actually learn a lot about yourself and and you know I think you grow as a person and that's been the fun part of it and and to be able to sort of grow as a person in doing something that i truly love i think like i said that's something i'm really grateful for i think i'm glad you already touching on two three key themes that i really want to emphasize on this podcast right one is that ultimately people who want to do big things you know they need to develop some deeper understanding of who they are you know what drives you what your belief system is right and second is continuous investment in learning you know this uh, beginners mindset you know i personally seen for myself also and i've done few things in entrepreneurship but every time i start something new i feel like if i don't remind myself that i don't know this is new and into i would rather operate like a first time 25 year old entrepreneur as opposed to someone you know who has done few things because that brings at least you know what i a lot of blind spots and also so that's you know one thing i want to keep emphasizing on this podcast that you know people who if you want to do big things you have to keep learning you know you cannot you know just rest on laurels you know beyond a point yeah and and I- and i think it's a, it's a really good thing you 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 mentioned and you, you know you spoke about it. you've really got to have that beginners mind especially i guess in 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 what you do which you keep starting looking to do new things and keep challenging yourself um i think it's also that absence of ego a little bit you know i think taking that little bit of that ego out of the the picture you know and and understanding that look you know i i, I just need to go back and there are other people in this field um who who know a lot more than me you know they might not have played as much as and I and I've seen that you know I'll, I'll be very honest I I've seen that in terms of you know in my work that I've done now with the NCA and um in in around, in around the coaching space I have played a lot of the game but you know honestly um uh, you know when I've interacted with people who so for example I I've in, I interact with coaches sometimes and who do our coaching courses and you know who worked with kids you know they they probably have not played the game for such a long time but they worked with young kids for 15 20 25 years and that's an incredible body of work and experience and when i interact with them and i you know and they they're picking up things and we're doing these video analysis and we're doing this stuff and i'm looking the, and then and they're picking up things which even though i've played for such a long time i don't pick up and i look at them and sometimes you know that can get a little intimidating you know you you can think wow man i've played the game for such a long time maybe i need to 
be able to you know uh, know this but then when you sit back and think about it you you actually think well not really i mean you know i might have played for a long time and yeah i have that skill of playing but you know here you you you're actually working with masters who maybe seen videos for 25 years right you know they have that same level of experience you had on a cricket field mm-hmm. they have it in something else right. and you know you just got to be able to respect that and you got to understand that in this environment you're actually the one who's the learner or you're the one who's got to you know ask them the questions and pick up things and and you know and and i think sometimes it it yeah this has to be a little bit of an absence of ego in that because and i i feel sometimes you know and and then just and sometimes you know some of these guys will look at me and say but you've played the game for such a long time and you should know that no not really i mean i have yeah, i've played it so probably been good at that but you know in in terms of other areas you know you guys have probably done a lot more and i need to respect that and understand that so it's it's that balance at least in our coaching thing of you know using that experience and the and the luck or or whatever the the advantage that i've had of having played that so that's something that you know is going to be very unique to me that experience that i've had and those experiences that i've had or you know for having played so much that's going to be unique to me but i have to add on to that you know and i think that's the same thing like i'm sure that i mean maybe you would have experienced that like your experiences of maybe setting up mintra that's unique to you right you're always going to have that but then when you get into a new space i'm sure there's other things that you're going to have to pick up from people who probably been in that space for longer no oh, absolutely and you know especially when you transition from one domain to another domain yeah yeah you know you know, know nothing about that you know i remember you know meeting you in 2016 when you were starting cult yeah. and we had that one fitness center right yeah. i mean i might have said whatever i told you you know in terms of ambition yeah. honestly I did not know anything yeah. about the business of fitness in fact didn't even have a good idea about how big the market is and much later i learned the market is actually much smaller but it took you know, maybe that's a good thing isn't it i, I think because like maybe like you can answer this one maybe sometimes not knowing is also a good thing yeah yeah absolutely yeah. Yeah. having that thing of yeah and i think that's probably i don't know where sometimes i feel that i can get a little stuck sometimes you want to know too much right. you know so you are right especially not to take anything which involves significant risk it's if you know too much and evaluate and get into the whole analysis paralysis almost you will never take that thing and the thing is the risk may be so much that you know the logically it does not make sense like you know, for most people it will not make sense to quit their job and start a company because the odds are stacked against you but in that journey you figure some things out you start to see pattern you start to notch notch small wins you start to you know um uh feel more confident you know about the space and yeah but surely i mean i'm surely there must be a there must be risk can't be just fool hardiness as well right i mean there must be some like it's interesting i was kind of correlating this to cricket as well right cricketers uh, we are always taking risk right and we are always i mean i'm as a coach now always talking to um players about risk right when do you take that risk do we go for it or or you know there are situations in the game that change right you might be chasing 10 runs and over yeah. just giving an example in a in a one day game you're chasing 10 runs and over yeah. and then obviously there's a significantly high level of risk required yeah. suddenly you bring that down you take that risk and you right. bring that down to 5 runs and over then the amount of risk that you take probably needs to be less you need right. to be able to evaluate that yeah. so i guess i mean it'd be interesting to see you get your point that in yeah. taking these risks i mean do you have to be full hardy or there's there's some there's some no fight behind the risk also so my point of view is definitely don't need to be you know full hardy because so few basic checks one can go through one is what is my worst case scenario here take even cricket you know worst case scenario for take a risk is you lose that match but you can still have an amazing career you can win a series right so a little bit of that you know what is the implication so at least personally when i have taken a big risk my worst case scenario has never been that bad that you know i'm going to be on the street and like kids you know we're not of feel them or you know my worst case scenario was i'll go back and find a decent job right. that's because i have done some you know foundation earlier garden some degree garden some experience new some skills so i think that's one thing second also preparing to take the risk like if you know i wake up one in the morning and take a risk what's in thinking but for a period of time right. and preparing you know at least one should know all the things you can know again you know you you are have other people are there uh, trying to build similar companies what is their experience you know what a general track record so a lot of things you can take a highly informed risk i guess right and but speaking of risk you know i want to go back to you know what are the biggest risk you know any professional athlete take you know which you would take in your teenage year to commit to career in sports 
Yeah. And a Korean sports, you know, in India at any given time, you know, now it's slightly better, but earlier probably 15 people in the whole country can make a living, you know, playing for India. Yeah. Today, maybe a few hundred people. So that's an inordinate, uh, inordinate amount of risk very early in your career. How did you think about that at that time? Yeah, that probably is the most riskiest decision I've ever made, you know, and uh, obviously I'm glad now. And like I said, I'm very grateful that I made that decision. But it was a very risky decision and it was not a risk. It was a risky decision from obviously from the background that also that I came from, you know, I came from a background where both my um, parents were, we, we, I mean, I, I wouldn't say we came, we came from a middle, middle class background, typical Indian back, uh, background where both the parents worked. Uh, it's not like there was a big business waiting at the end of it for me. Um, you know, both my, my mom was you know, teaching at the architecture college. My dad worked uh, in a private company. So typical, you know, uh, family, two parents working jobs. Um, they would have retired at 58, um, you know, and, 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 and education was an important part of, of my family. I mean, in the sense, you know, my parents, were both postgraduates, my, every, you know, just, just typical sort of middle class family where a lot of people studied and, you know, your study was important. And then it, it, it did feel like, you know, um, again, like I, honestly, I looked at it quite interesting. I looked at it as a little bit like that worst case scenario kind of concept. You know, I could have had the option of doing typically what a lot of kids in that age did, which was do engineering, uh, you know, um, and and I probably had the, I, I, I didn't have the love for it, to be very honest. I didn't have the love for math or, you know, engineering. But certainly I had, and I could study hard enough and was diligent enough to get enough marks to probably get in and, you know, do that. Um, and it and it was a risk and, and I'm just, you know, really fortunate and lucky that my parents um, were very supportive of that risk, you know. And I think that at that age, you need parents and you need, uh, like, your counsellors or your principals in the school when I was at St. Joseph's Boys High School or at, then I did commerce uh, after that. Uh, and purely I did commerce because I knew that it would give me a little bit more time to play the game. Um, and the, the worst case scenario for me was I gave myself time till I was in college and a little little bit after that. Uh, and if that didn't happen, then I would have just, I, I sort of given myself a hard stop of maybe 24, 25 and said, then I'll try and go back and do an MBA or, you know, something like that and just, just move on. Because I was quite clear in my mind that I didn't want to be just someone uh, who just kept playing the game and if it wasn't going too far, you know, I, I was it was I was a little ambitious as well. So, you know, luckily for me, at that critical age, around 23, 24, things worked out and, and I was able to make it. But it was a risk and it was not an easy decision. It, it took a lot of thought at home. I, I can say, you know, I can still feel the, the stress that was in and around the house because, you know, um, the decision I was making, I was foregoing uh, a career in, in academics for a period of time. And certainly, even if I had come back into academics after 23, 24, it would never have been the same. You know, I could never have, it's not, it's not like, for example, my brother went to engineering college, went to IAM and he did the more sort of traditional route that would probably, you know, have been expected of my, of me in some ways of what not expected, but you know, what people in my family did, you know, and, and so uh, just having that parent support and my parents saying it's okay, you know, something you love, you know, go for it. Um, it's okay, we'll see what happens. Um, that was it's hard. And, you know, I uh, sometimes wonder, you know, I had my chat with my parents. Says, How did you let, you know, you could have stopped me. And it was not like I was taking a stupid risk. I, I, there was some, there was some data, there was some information telling me that, hey, you are good at it. I could look around me and look at my peers and see that I didn't think of myself as exceptional, specially talented, but certainly in whatever the benchmarks or the markers that I was hitting, um, I was hitting at least at the level, at the top level. So that gave me some confidence to take that risk. But um, but yeah, it's not an easy one. And and again, it's like it's incredible how the wheel changes, right? You you have you face the same thing with your own children now, you know, in some ways, in in different ways, that, right. you know. So and so on that, you know, I want to ask a different question. But just first, I'm really glad, you know, the risk worked out not only for you, but I think you know millions of people in there probably glad. I mean, you, I mean, ultimately the things you've achieved on cricket field, you know, among the all-time greats who ever played the game, right? So, that's uh, absolutely incredible. But now you are, in a, as a coach, you know, and I know we'll maybe talk about your Cricket Academy 6, where you're working with a lot of, you know, younger athletes, which will go through similar journey of being in their teenage years and having to make that choice. Probably, you know, I don't know, one can only say, 
while opportunities are large, but also it's you know that much more competitive world out there. So, what is your process of guiding uh, any youngster who is thinking about you know committing to a career in sports? Yeah, so it's 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 um, it's one of the things that you know that just a percentage of people who actually make it in sport is so small, you know. So I and I always say that you know you cannot have. I I actually believe that you can't put all your eggs in one basket. You know, you've got to have that ability to because, unfortunately, in sport, it's it's different to studies. You know, I think in studies there is a certain level of quid pro quo. I mean, you know, you can put in that effort, and you're guaranteed some results. You know, there is okay. You might not necessarily make it into an IIT or an IIM or maybe the elite elite in order like an Ivy League college, but you if you study hard enough, you'll certainly make it to a, a basic level call but in cricket or in any sport for that matter that guarantee is not there because there's a lot of i think there's there's luck involved there's there's chance uh, you know uh, there is uh, you know you can get injured i mean you young sportsmen put their bodies on the line all the time you know and the there's a high chance and a risk of injury and some of those injuries can even if not career threatening can set you back so much that can certainly give you a huge disadvantage uh, with your peers and among people and that can have long term implications because you lose out on a year and a half or two years at at some stage you know um so it, it it's it, it, in in that sense you know a lot of a lot of the, the advice that you know we give a lot of our young kids and who come there and and I think um, that's why a lot of our tagline is cricket for all at at 6 and it's it's an academy that I mentor but you know it's um it's that there are a lot of other things that you can get out of sport i think you know to just purely go into sport thinking that i want to make this a profession or a career is you know um is like going is like taking admission into a school and telling the school that at the end of this you know i want my uh, kid to be a neuroscientist from harvard or something like that you know and you don't do that right that's unrealistic and that's actually the odds i mean that's actually that's that's the level of odds yeah even that odd made you better better in some ways <laughs> so you know those are the odds that you're um that you're working with so i think a lot of the times it's education to parents and things that that when you put your children into academies or when you get them to play sport I think there are a lot of other benefits that you need to see and understand as to why you're doing this you know and I think there are with sport that's the beauty especially in in the times that we live in today um I think getting your children involved in sport at that age and and getting them to a decently competent level you know I think um uh, is is something you can definitely aspire for um and and that means you know just their op- their access to ability to interact with other people yeah. uh their ability to deal with success and failure the the discipline required in sport even if it is just going to an academy and knowing that my slot or timing in the academy was 9:30 to 12:30 well that means you've got to travel you've got to get there by 9:30 you know these are things that will hold you in good stead in anything you do in life yeah. right so having that balance up to a certain age certainly wherein you have to and I, and i don't think it's that difficult Yes, you have to make sacrifices as a sportsman. If you want to, uh, you know, it will mean probably cutting out on social time, cutting out on time in front of the screens. It's probably not a bad thing actually for parents, you know. Uh, and cutting out on maybe some of the normal things that say teenagers do, uh, you might have to sacrifice that. But then balancing a certain level of basic studies and 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 education and sport, I don't think is impossible. Is is it, it, I don't think it stops you from. becoming an an international or elite cricketer so sometimes what worries me is i see today parents or or children you know they start giving up school and studies at the age of in 8th standard 9th standard um and want to make their children sportsmen and any is sportsy khelega and i think sometimes that's that's actually putting too much pressure on on kids rather than just allowing them to be kids till they're 17 18 and seeing where it goes and of course it, and and then the sacrifices that you're making is not from the education or from the school time the sacrifices you're making is in time away from that and and a lot of things that we're seeing in fact people children who are sort of committing only to sport and not doing other things is is that you can only play sport for a, a certain amount of time in the day 
it is a physically demanding exercise. So even if you're training three hours a day or four hours a day, you can't do more than that. Even however good you want to be, just because your body won't allow you, you you risk injury or you will, uh, and then you end up with so much of time with you know doing. You end up in front of screens or you end up doing stuff that probably you shouldn't be doing. Whereas if you had something like you could study or you had other interests, um, it actually does help you and clears your mind to be able to play sports. So that's I think a lot of the messages that that I do give to uh, a lot of parents or to young kids, and we try and. Drive that on that you know to be excellent at something at least up to a certain age you know at least sure after you you know have committed it you get to eighteen nineteen yes then you probably have to decide between a a career in a university or a college um, and and sport and and you know that's a decision you have to make and that's a risky decision uh, people have to make but certainly you know uh, up to the age of eighteen or you know I, I certainly do believe that you can easily manage both and at a very competent level and then. And then take it from there. You know, don't need to give up sport. You don't need to give up other things too quickly. In fact, I actually feel it's um, it's counterproductive. And you build a good foundation till the age of eighteen. At some point, you can take a more calculated exactly. assessment of which direction you want to go. And I think other point you're highlighting, which is probably in all of us need to talk a lot more of, is the life skills that sports build. And I've seen in time and again, Rahul, even the professional setting. You know, when I'm interviewing someone or working somebody and. Somebody who's played sport even for few years, yeah. you can see the personality is different. Correct. You know, you are more grounded. You can take, you know, both wins and losses, you know, with an even keel. You have a growth mindset because every sport person knows that I need to put in effort to get better. You know, I can't just be entitled to it. You know, just because of a fancy degree, sometimes you feel you are entitled to a promotion or certain responsibility and so on. Right? Teamwork is amazing, especially people who play team sport. They Almost understand that winning is always more important than the personal contribution. That was so. I think those you know outstanding life skills, and I think you know a lot of there's a people in us from you know business background. We keep reaching out to people from the sports world right? because there's so much to learn. And I also feel for people even their twenties, thirties to just recreationally keep playing sport. I think it's a great thing for you know their development. Yeah, that's that's the one of the sad things I I feel about India, and you know it's one of the things I I see that. Unfortunately for us, I, I like I know so many of my friends, you know, who are very good sportsmen and played uh, quite very, really good sport in school and you know in the early years of our college thing. But as they've gone into to more professional colleges and gone into more sort of careers, they've lost not and and it's just they still love the sport and they're still great followers of the sport and they're watching it and they 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 great consumers of the sport. But their ability to access the sport. Has become, you know, less sort of. I think when I look abroad and I look at, say, UK, I've never been to the US much, so I, I don't know how the system works there. But I look at UK and just the amount of recreational sport and the environment that there is for, you know, people and even at at young age, at twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, to come together and still be playing some level of competitive sport is a lot more than in this country. It's getting better, and I, you know, you see a lot of these football fields coming up now. You see, there's a lot of corporate sort of cricket being played. And it's getting better, but but certainly, you know, I think I, I completely agree with you. You know, just that um, that ability for people to be able to play more, uh, continue to play sport as they you know work and you know, uh, and I think that's the challenge in big cities. You know, I think our just our public our public places for us to be able to play sport have diminished so much. Um, maybe the pressures of work have increased so much and. And and I I mean I just use an example my own friends some of whom I truly love sport but they just haven't been able to play sport after you know twelfth standard or college and 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 I think you know I feel really bad for them because it's uh, you know we just and I know they would love to do it but um, but yeah it's, it's I think it does wonders too I think from everything from just mental health you know social relationships yeah. physical health you know time away from work I think yeah. the great stress bust and so on yeah. I want to use this conversation as a reminder you know I've been playing golf on and off. And trying to learn tennis, so I think that will be my takeaway. Rahul, you know, from make sure, yeah, no, like so thrice a week, I make sure you know, yeah, play something. Absolutely, and and you know, I think it's just it's just great. You just meet so many different people as well, you know. That's a that's a lot of times I tell, um, I, I tell a lot of the young kids and parents that even if you don't, um, even if this doesn't become your, uh, it doesn't become your profession, or you're not lucky enough to make it your profession because a very small percentage will. Just the time that you have spent here, you know, you just interacted with so many different people from different backgrounds, different experiences. Um, you've traveled with them, you've played matches with them. You, 
I think you know when you play games and sport with people, you you get to really know people a lot better than you would in you know in any classroom or you know in any environment like that because you go through so much and your your experiences with people in classrooms is very limited to that class or that course and then and then even in a classroom you tend to connect with say three four people in time at best you know and it's not like you have a huge group of people but in sport in some ways you're forced. um you know just to have connections with a lot more people uh, than than you would in in say in a classroom environment so um yeah i think there's some lessons of course there's a lot you learn in class and like i said you know you can never i i'm not i'm not an i'm a, not at all an advocate of you know giving up education and academics because i truly believe up to a certain age it's very important thing to do and i think that even helps you in your sport but uh, but there are lessons that you learn on a sports field that uh, that you know you just cannot learn uh, in a in a classroom so one of the areas you know where i feel anyone who is not in sports can draw a lot of inspiration from is this idea of deliberate practice see most of us even what i do in my work i don't really practice you know i just show up and you can engage in meeting or speak my mind but very rarely i will take time of saying i really want to practice you know whether it is including something as simple as communication because as leaders you know you communicate all the time right. but i don't necessarily work on it deliberately while if you are a sports person you know you may play you know a, a match one day or twice a week but all the other time you show up and practice yeah. and you are trying to improve a skill you know very deliberate man i'm assuming most people who have at least become very good at yeah. they probably take practice days as seriously maybe even more seriously as a game day yeah. can you talk about both you know your personal experience as a player your approach to practice and now you know as a coach how do you think what practice is yeah and it's a really good point i think that's a this is a terrific point because i think deliberate practice is is actually the key to the whole thing and and you and the thing and the thing with sport is and especially uh i guess at any stage but even it's become actually even more accentuated now is that you got to constantly keep evolving your skills because people around you and especially when you're playing at an elite level they are they are analyzing you a lot the new data and analysis has changed so much today that they're able to pick up your strengths and areas you need to improve on you know very very quickly and so you've also got to stay ahead of the curve so it's a constant journey like you said it's it's you're never you're never actually complete as a player or you know for that matter as, as a coach but you're never really complete as a player you you know because people are always analyzing where you're good at what you're improving and you can actually see the way they strategize against you you know i can see it now as a coach like literally from series to series you know somebody has a good series and he's done well in a particular area you can just see how people will strategize the next time somebody they plays against someone else and they've changed and so you've got to almost stay ahead of the curve and and improving any skill comes with that level of deliberate practice and but there's no doubt about it the the best players that i have worked with or i have played with or you know i continue to work with are the ones who honestly so yes quantity is one aspect of it but it's the quality of that practice that is almost more important you know what am i getting out of that practice and am i willing to push myself and challenge myself out of my comfort zone that is the important thing a lot of times i find that there are people who get very good at something and then they are just comfortable doing that they don't want to they don't want to look uncomfortable or they or you know they are um scared to to sometimes try new things and and then you find that there's a ceiling limit to that then you find people plateau out in their careers or they're not able to just take that next step or go to the level but the guys who are constantly doing well and you know really at an elite level one of the things that certainly stands out for me is this really understanding you spoke about it you know knowing yourself being truly and it's not about advertising it to the world but it's being truly understanding your skills your strengths areas you need to work on and then being deliberate about working on that and then getting better at that and understand so let's that. talk about both in a little more detail of if you are an athlete or or a professional what will be your method of how do you really get to know yourself you know introspection talk to people coaches etc and similarly if you slow it down to a great practice day what kind of mindset you know people bring to the table on that day and how do you make sure that 3 4 hours you really get you know this whole idea of deliberate practice so again really really good question so so one of the 
things is is introspection. I think it's a combination of things of how you would go about a process of at least you know for me personally a large part of it is introspection because there are at least in the mental and the psychological side of the sport nobody knows yourself better than you do right nobody can you know how honestly nervous you felt in a particular situation you know whether in that situation you choked or not or you took the right call or not because you know what was going on in your head no coach no psychologist no nobody else can tell you that unless you're willing to open up to that level and even then i think you're never going to be really able to recreate the emotions for somebody else or what you were going through so so i think that in that level introspection is really important you know is you know you know what you felt right and and it's a emotion a lot of it is sometimes the mistakes we make or is is because we just lose it emotionally or we just are not thinking right and and i think you know that um so i think a lot of that will come with introspection of understanding having that um that level of honesty with yourself then of course there is the skill side of things you know that's where analysts or uh, coaches can really help you because they're seeing you from an outside they've got a you're feeling something so that's really important to bring to the table but then there is also another aspect of other people with other eyes watching you as well who can also bring you know their uh, experiences their knowledge they're probably looking at um, uh, at data a lot more than you are especially our analysts are so they're telling you where people are bowling at you or where where people are trying to attack you or you know what so so they bring that to the table uh and and coaches will you know look at it from a skill perspective and say hey this skill you can get better at or this is what i noticed about you sometimes when you're just playing you probably might not be able to pick up some of the stuff that other people are so it's a combination of both of those things i think you know you bring both of that together to to just really start to to get yourself to know yourself better and 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 to improve um and then like when you spoke about you know what's like for me a, a really perfect practice day or someone really thing is um is i think firstly being prepared you know a player coming prepared to the practice session very clear about what it is that he's looking to work on not necessarily relying on a coach to tell him what he needs to work on you know i think the best players for me are the ones who um reflect on the game that they've just played analyze it understand what they need to work on and then actually come with a plan or an idea and discuss that you know with the coaches this is what i need to work on rather than you know um just realizing or just focusing on the practicing and the competing you know as players i mean we can focus on the practicing and the competing we have to do that as players you have to and sometimes you can think hey i'll let the coach do the reflection or other people do that you know and they will tell me what to do but i think the best players are the ones who actually do the whole process you know they 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 go back and they reflect on it and they'll analyze it as well themselves knowing fully well that the coaches are doing the same thing as well you know and then there's uh, so you have someone who's well prepared who's planned who comes to the session knows what he's trying to achieve out of the session uh and and then you know um challenging yourself in practice uh as much as possible to do a variety of things rather than practicing the same thing over and over again and recognizing what it is that i'm probably not that good at what skills i am looking to improve so i think it's 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 also important like if when we are working when you're working on something is to is to recognize that skill learning takes time and being patient with that process and then and not and then not trying to learn too many things at the same time you know if you're work, working on something and giving it that time to be able to get better at it uh and trusting that process for a while before moving on to something else rather than you know just trying to learn a bunch of things and and not giving at least in in cricket as a skill enough time to be able to get to a if not a level of perfection which you probably never will but certainly to a certainly to a a a, a truly a, an international standard in in the level that that we are working at so yeah i think the and then and then just that because it's even in a practice session i think you know people ask me oh, how do you how can you concentrate better or how do you you know so yeah there is a level of concentration of things that you can improve sitting in a room and you know you do meditation or you do visualization and yeah that that stuff that helps and that's great 
but there's also opportunities within a practice session wherein you can learn these skills you know by just being how attentive you are how present you are even in a practice session rather than drifting and you know so there's there's a lot and i think good quality practice sessions or when you see good quality players i think what they do is they they're really good at at a lot of these things they're prepared they know what they're working on they're really attentive um they switched on and and over a lot about that you know what really pleases you as a coach uh, and i think it's something we talk about a lot is that the people then look to other people who they can help at least in a team sport i think what's really important in a team sport is that after you've got what you needed to do is to look around and see how you can support other people because in a lot of ways you are invested in the success of other people to in your success you know if you so for example if you've done your batting or your bowling and you can you look around and see hey there's someone i can help is a conversation i i can have with somebody that i know will help him be, you know perform better uh is there someone i can throw balls to is there someone i can you know so there are a bunch of a variety of things that you can do to help um help your teammates and help other people so that they get better and with that the team gets better so so yeah i think it's that's like a perfect session when someone's really worked on his stuff and then he's also willing to um not just walk away from it and say i've got what i need but hey can i what can i do for the team and what can i come back and you know for me a coach that's was truly excellent to see so and everything you talked about rahul you know at the end of day uh reflecting on your day you know what went well what didn't go well introspecting about it maybe having a conversation with something about it in the morning coming prepared to practice being fully present and aware and looking out of ways to help other teammates and all of those tools i think can be used as probably should be used by anyone who's trying to do anything significant in life you know i can say all of it can definitely apply to my day or the people you know i work with in my office or pretty much anyone who's going to be watching this I think these are universal tools which are allowing you to in some ways optimize you know your performance in a day and deliberately putting effort to get better every single day yeah. which you would do long enough period of time you know whatever one chooses to do can yeah. become significantly better yeah and and also you know and I think it's and also not forgetting to enjoy it you know I think some other idea you know sometimes we can get too caught up in this and we forget to let our head down or we forget to chill out and understand that a lot of this stuff takes a lot out of you as well emotionally you know and I think being able to then switch off emotionally uh in whatever way that you find most comfortable is also really important you know that's how, that's actually really been one of my learnings in my sport and and especially someone like me you know growing up I was very intense and you know very focused and and I think a lot of times it's only when I actually realized the actual importance of also learning to emotionally switch off and mentally switch off um so that I can bring a lot of this energy into this because you know I I think that like like you said right it's a great things to learn and great things to do but let's be realistic it's not going to happen every day you know we're not it's it's impossible that every day we turn up and you know every day is 100% it's it's tough it's it's tough to live that life so being i think in some ways being also compassionate with yourself and understanding that it's not always going to work out and you know you're going to have some good days and bad days but in general if you're around that path and also remembering that you know as much to be able to bring all that energy into a practice session or to a match you need to find a way to be able to switch off of it and i think that's a big challenge for a lot of ambitious people or people who are at that elite level of performance who want to do well is that they're so um, switched on that sometimes you can you know almost burn out and 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 you sort of expend it so much of mental and emotional energy off the field or off the practice that you're never really working or optimizing it optimizing your things so no thanks for sharing i think that's a great reminder because if you want to do anything significant it is going to take a very long period of time yeah. no one can produce miraculous results in a one year or two year right yeah. if you're going to do something for 10 or 20 years you need to have that stamina to stay in the game that long right so that way and every single day obviously cannot be great yeah. so as long as you have a few good days and the other days you know just be easy on yourself and you know, like yeah. we are all and then we are all very normal people right no yeah. one is you know absolutely yeah right? you know absolutely and it's it's uh, you know we you just happen to be good at doing something you know it's not like there's a so a lot of times you know it's I have, you know people say oh, I had a great career but yeah but there's a huge host of things that I'm not very good at you know I'm in fact shocking at you know <laughs> terrible at you know and, uh, and yeah we can avoid those actually but <laughs> but, but yeah you, you know and I think that's uh, so it's lucky to have a skill and do it and but part of you know what you touched upon is um uh, Spartan and parcel of trying to make big things happen you know whether on a sports field or as an entrepreneur or a professional is 
the higher you aim the bigger and deeper the setbacks will be they are inevitable at least you know for example in my experience you know my own personal journey as well as most entrepreneurs i know they have had multiple near death experiences like every single one of them no one say yeah, things just went you know beautifully from day one right i'm pretty sure most athletes go through that so over a period of time you know what has been your method to you know either in your personal journey or the players you work with what do you do focus on when things just are not falling in place and was that can end up being a very lonely place yeah no it's a tough place and it's a great learning experience as well you know those experiences are incredibly learning maybe not at that time they feel terrible at that time but when when you get out of that it's it's um it's it is a great learning experience and a large part of a lot of these journeys is is you know it is lonely at times but it's also i think recognizing that you have to be comfortable in some ways with being uncomfortable you know you have to be comfortable with that and you have to um you just have to go through these things and it's not unique to you as a person it's unique to anyone who's trying to achieve that level of excellence you know there are going to be some really difficult days and like you said some really low lows and uh tough periods uh and being comfortable in some ways with that and then just knowing that um and and again maybe utilizing that level of sort of growth mindset in that that hey this is also an opportunity to learn and grow um in some ways it's a really hard one on your ego at times like that and that's times that you need to be able to maybe um you know i think be more than just about your success uh, maybe find a way to um find a way to sort of be someone more or be someone more to somebody else or other people or just have that maybe support system around you wherein not everyone you know is invested around your success or you know or or you being successful and you have other relationships and you've cultivated other connections which are a little bit more important than just uh, just you who you are as a as a professional uh yeah i think things like that do certainly do help i mean i don't know if there's a perfect answer to that or i've ever got a you know a perfect solution to that uh but but yeah it's it's, it's, it's difficult and if you if you want to you know achieve greatness there are some very lonely days and you know you're away from home you're away from people um you know sometimes there's not a lot of people that you, you because you in some ways you feel responsible for you feel responsible for everything you feel responsible for the success and failure and you take it personally it's probably what makes uh elite people great as well because they're t- willing to take personal responsibility for things they're willing to put themselves on the line you know they 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 they're not blaming other people or they're not looking to other people to uh, help them and and at times like that it it, it can feel uh, a little bit lonely but um, but i think I mean I I don't know if there's a solution but it's mm-hmm. just I think but you just just acknowledging that you know would you agree that uh, for most people who pursue something or you know, elite in their career are inevitably going to have those low points as well it's just almost part of the journey it comes with the package it does I mean uh, absolutely and I think just recognizing that understanding that uh, is is absolutely uh, critical and not being uh, you know almost yeah I, I think in some ways if you in if you prepare yourself mentally to know that look when you are you know um competing at a really elite level or competing at that top class level or trying to get the best out of yourself uh there are going to be times when you know it's it's going to be tough and it's going to be some difficult periods and it's not unique to you i think acknowledging that's really important i just give give you the motivation to keep going and i think resilience is important in these things perseverance um you know you just uh, to a level i think everyone who's achieved something you know you've got to have that resilience and that perseverance and and i thought only in whatever you've achieved i think whatever you've done a certain level of resilience is important even if you've just got a basic degree or any college or if you've done something there is a level of resilience required in that it's just it gets ramped up and amplified i think the higher you go and the more the more competitive it gets so raul you're talking about you know letting your uh, hair down and just just having easy day also and we have obviously all of us you watched on television being you know this intense player with you know inhuman power of concentration on the field and so on always very calm like never been to any controversy or showing any emotion and then we saw you in this uh, credit where you were basically became indra nagar ka gunda and just you know really brought out that uh, 
angry persona which looked very authentic on screen did you have to practice a lot for it or it was just you know bursting to go <laughs> probably bursting <laughs> <laughs> no it was a, it was an interesting one i mean i obviously just given the script to that and i was really wary i wasn't really sure about how it would go um but yeah i mean it's just one of those things sometimes you know you just just let yourself go and and have some fun with it and and luckily it sort of uh, came out looking okay it wasn't too bad you know i was telling that director i said you know this comes out either i'm going to give you two calls either i'm going to be screaming at the end of the phone or you know i'm going to say it was pretty okay but um but but yeah no it, it was fun it was fun to do sometimes it's just fun to do things that you know uh, you can do differently and i think even in that i think over the years you know it's not just that ad but i think just i've done and worked with so many different people in uh, again i've been lucky because i've been a cricketer and now it's like been uh, i've probably done my first ad when i was in 1996 so it's been 27 years and since i've been doing this mm-hmm. and i've got to m- meet a bunch of really creative people in that field as well you know i think this opportunities in sport um have actually given me this in- incredible um it- it's just given me an incredible opportunity to meet with so many different people in so many different fields you know and i think uh, in- in- i've met and got to know people in that field i've um you know, just travel the world and 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 again just that curiosity if you're curious you know you ask a few questions and you just get to meet so many interesting people who do so many interesting things i mean we go abroad and you know you go to um you're always invited to high commission functions or uh, in there you know some places and you get to meet so many people from the indian foreign service so you you know you have a passion for wildlife and you you you, you go there and you're lucky to meet so many people involved in 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 that and and you know uh, create a sort of and i think that's the that's a lucky thing as a, as a as a someone who you know uh, if you're lucky to be sort of hate to use the word famous but you're lucky to sort of be a well known personality um you just have that ability i think um to be able to um just interact and meet so many different people and i think you know i'm just really grateful for that there's so much i've learned uh, from so many of these interactions just outside of a sporting field and sporting people that's shaped really who i am yeah no that cred and definitely touched a nerve i think people <laughs> really wanted to see you in a, like break the character and be in that avatar but uh, speaking of wildlife also i know you take time to you really explored all the forest especially around karnataka really well and been there i think yeah. countless times eh yeah it's just a great form of relaxation again it's like what we spoke about you know i think just emotionally and mentally being able to switch off and and find something that you enjoy I'm lucky i'm lucky that you know my wife and both the kids truly love it as well and you know they love being part of these uh, experiences with us so yeah so as and when you know obviously i wish i could do it a lot more <laughs> as as we can as we always wish we could do a lot of things that you know we enjoy a lot more but but yeah I, i just i think it's it's great it's just a really great getaway um it just refreshes you even if it's for a few days and um it's just you know it's something that um yeah you know you're lucky and and passionate that in and around bangalore uh, not more than 4 or 5 hours drive away you've got some really beautiful places in kabini and bandipur and just that nilgiri biosphere which is a beautiful place to be Yeah, at least folks, you know, listening from Karnataka, getting more about exploring these places. Ah, they, 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 this, I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's just a, uh, again, and I also find, you know, I think we recently went on a diving trip as well. We went scuba diving and stuff, and I, I really find, you know, that for me, I, I find that, you know, when you interact a lot with people who are connected with nature or with just wildlife, and um, it's, it's just a different kind of people you are also interacting with. i think they you just see this this so much not into just the materialistic things of you know our day to day life and just different kind of people you know who get attracted to or who dedicate their lives to these things and it's a really inspirational thing to see you know uh, how happy and, and and amazing things how happy they are how connected they are and how like we speak about being present sometimes how present they are in what they're doing um and i find a lot of that in people who have these deep connections with nature and wildlife and just the outdoor way of life right? no, absolutely i think all of us can benefit from that you know just uh, taking a break from the everyday hustle and trying to make things happen and just be somewhere where you know more yeah. nature and more grounded and just be present you know for a couple of days now i want to zoom out and ask you a more big picture question about just indian cricket see india's obviously and has come a long way in cricket the last 25 30 years you know pretty much you know we have the most successful league anywhere in the world we produce you know huge number of world class cricketers almost you know like a machinery now 
Mm. Uh, it's also great as a business. You know, huge amount of money has come in. What will be your vision for cricket for next ten, twenty years? If you think about, you know, what are that? Not in terms of specific. I hope we win lots of tournaments, and you have some important coming up. So all the best for that. But yeah. more in terms of not milestones, but you know, just as a sport, like how can we continue to evolve from here? I I just think in I just hope we can become a lot more. Uh, I mean we are and it's getting better and better. But just I think just becoming a lot more inclusive, you know. And it's just incredible to see uh, how the women's sport is taking off in this country, you know, with the with the WPL and just women's sport and just seeing the little bit more focus on it. So that's you know been a terrific thing to see over the last few years, you know. Uh, and and then also one of the things that has changed from my time when I started is just how much. um so a lot of the young players coming from smaller towns and cities uh, which just means you know very heartening to see like in the early days most of the cricketers came from say the big cities and the five six metros and there were few kids who came from smaller places but today i think that's probably almost turned on its head there are a lot of people are coming from smaller places as well so so i think you know for us i think there's a great opportunity to be a really inclusive sport it's a sport that really captures the imagination of this country it's already is an inclusive sport i wouldn't say it's you know it's a lot i mean i mean i think but i think we can do even a lot more i think if we can just spread the the infrastructure and the facilities to a lot more people um all all across uh, the country uh, boys and girls uh, then i think you know we'll truly see the potential of not just like you said it's not about us winning more trophies and getting more talent and all of that but just the benefits and the advantages of playing the sport and following the sport and being influenced by the sport can be experienced by a lot more people rather than just you know a few people having access to that uh, cricket as a sport needs to be played at a competitive level or a level needs certain facilities and it's i know there is one level of sport being played on the streets on the roads with tennis ball which is good but to truly you know to truly experience the sport or to truly sample the benefits of the sport you need a certain amount of facilities and nets and grounds and some level of competition to be able to play it and get get the most out of it and i think over the next 10 20 years if we can just grow that exponentially and we can grow that to or different parts of the country i mean places like the northeast and uh, you know right up in jammu and kashmir and really get to a level where you know we are uh, being able to take the sport to everyone boys and girls and improve the grassroots level facilities for the sport at the elite level i think we are there it's only keep going to keep growing um you know uh the financials but the money is getting better the professionalism is getting better at the elite level but i would really want to see that trickle down to the grassroots level you know i think a lot of work can still happen at at a grassroots level in terms of infrastructure facilities uh, quality of coaching uh quality of equipment you know g- reaching some of these um Uh, sort of people who probably don't have the finances and and the ability to access some of it uh, i think if that can be done at a grassroots level then and then for me that's that's really the thing providing if not as good a professional or an uh, you know uh, infrastructure as an elite level but providing something that's similar at even at a grassroots level that a lot more people can access you know and i i think you know uh, thanks to support like yourself and cult we've been able to do that in a small way at at 6 you know where in it's really a grassroots level academy where anyone can access it and and you know we we able to support that but but i think a lot more of that needs to happen amazing so raul cricket is a big part of you know indian identity today you have been a great ambassador of sports and now in your coaching avatar you continue to give back and training everybody from young kids all the way to you know top athletes top, top cricket athletes in the country I'm really grateful for you to be able to take the time today make this long trek here to be able to record this i think is a very very informative conversation every time i meet you i learn something new i'm pretty sure listeners will have some takeaways which we can you know probably apply in their own life so thank you very much no pleasure is all mine okay so same here i i always enjoy these conversations and learn something from them as well and uh, yeah lovely to be in this uh, Yes, I think this is uh, this is an aspiration. I think I should get one of these. <laughs> <laughs> We've created a command for offer, you know, to host it. Yeah, this looks really cool. Thanks, Rahul. Thanks, Mukesh. Pleasure. Pleasure is mine. Always. <laughs>